Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. FAA restricts drones over Statue of Liberty, other landmarks. Amamom unveils their new drone racing camera. And AMA and UAA launch UAS for STEM Collegiate Drone Challenge. Hi, I'm Brie Cross. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. At the request of U.S. national security and law enforcement agencies, the FAA is using its existing authority under 14 CFR Section 99.7 Special Security Instructions to address concerns about unauthorized drone operations over 10 Department of the Interior sites, including the Statue of Liberty and Mount Rushmore. This is the first time the agency has placed airspace restrictions for unmanned aircraft or drones over DOI landmarks. The FAA has placed similar airspace restrictions over military bases that currently remain in place. The restrictions will be effective October 5, 2017. There are only a few exceptions that permit drone flights within these restrictions, and they must be coordinated with the individual facility and or the FAA. The FAA and DOI have agreed to restrict drone flights up to 400 feet within the lateral boundaries of these sites. Statue of Liberty National Monument, New York, New York, Boston National Historical Park, Boston, Massachusetts, Independence National Historical Park, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Folsom Dam, Folsom, California, Glen Canyon Dam, Lake Powell, Arizona, Grand Coulee Dam, Grand Coulee, Washington, Hoover Dam, Boulder City, Nevada, Jefferson National Expansion Memorial, St. Louis, Missouri, Mount Rushmore National Memorial, Keystone, South Dakota, and Shasta Dam, Shasta Lake, California. The FAA is considering additional requests from other federal agencies for restrictions using the FAA Section 99.7 authority as they are received. Emimon is launching its new HX camera. The new native 720p 60 frames per second camera will now include a 120 degree wide angle view with customizable picture balance settings, enabling a fully immersive drone racing experience. The XH camera is compatible with existing Connex ProSight systems with a simple software upgrade. Today, most drones come equipped with cameras allowing for FPV flight by having the pilot strap on goggles and fly the drones. However, many still use analog links between cameras and goggles with lower video quality, which hinder drone speed and accuracy. Amamom's wireless HD technology gives drone pilots the ability to fly their drones with FPV HD goggles and zero video latency. The Connex ProSight system combined with the HX camera enables advanced FPV visibility for drone racing pilots and is created to enhance video quality and significantly reduce transmission signal issues for the drone industry. Amamom is also offering a new software upgrade for the Connex ProSight mobile application, including a spectrum analyzer feature which together with the system's receiver is able to identify clean channels to prevent collisions or unexpected diversions, locate and map other ProSight analog users within a designated area, and provide user-friendly settings to set frequencies and visual preferences. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. A startup drone racing club in Homosassa, Florida, has what the group says is the first designated drone racing space in the state, and they are now working towards making it a place where they can hold events in the growing sport. Citrus Drone Racing is affiliated with MultiGP. Their crowdfunding site on GoFundMe is an effort to raise $1,000 towards their effort. When Hurricane Irma passed over Daytona Beach, tearing off roofs, Twisting signs and knocking over a water park slide, professors from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University were there to help assess the damage. Using UAS from the university's Daytona Beach campus, three professors worked with police officers not only to assess damage after the storm, 
but to photograph and document critical areas before Irma hit. Cleveland Indians pitcher Trevor Bauer has lost one of his drones, and the club is not being very helpful in helping him get it back. Bauer injured a finger with a drone rotor before he was to pitch last year in Game 3 of the ALCS and needed stitches. Now one of his drones has gone missing. Bauer said he was flying his drone in a park, and after a bad landing, it was nowhere to be found. That was our Drone Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. AMA and the University Aviation Association have launched the Collegiate Drone Challenge following the UAA Collegiate Aviation Conference in Riverside, California. The UAS for STEM Collegiate Challenge is designed for university students to learn, practice, and demonstrate professional UAS knowledge, mission planning, flight skills, data collection, analysis, and safety practices in a competitive environment. Teams will be required to utilize PIX4D mapping software and produce professional orthomosaic images. Upon completing the challenge, students will have gained critical knowledge needed to deploy drones within the high-demand job industry. Quote, following the success of UAS for STEM with high school students across the country, it only made sense to add a collegiate challenge, said Director of Education for the AMA, Bill Pritchett. All participating teams will be required to complete an online curriculum to ensure that all students have learned about multi-rotor safety and operation in the national airspace system. The online ground school will also tutor students so they can pass the FAA Part 107 exam. A 10% educational discount on DJI products is also available. Competitions will be held in spring 2018 at regional flying locations and hosted by AMA's University Model Aviation Students Clubs. Program registration fees include temporary picks for d licenses for each student, the online curriculum, UMASC membership for teams, and competition entry fees. Team registration begins November 1st. GoPro has added a long-expected feature to its Karma drone. The latest features to be unlocked in a software update include follow and watch modes, along with some others. In follow mode, the drone will follow its controller, which is not particularly helpful for activities like skiing or cycling. The feature would be more attractive if it were associated with a GPS wearable device, but so far that is not available. In watch mode, the Karma will hold a position and altitude and rotate to follow you as you move. The upgrade also allows a user to input up to 10 waypoints in cable cam mode, allowing planning for such things as swooping or crane shots, and the Karma will now also look up, which those drones that carry the camera underneath can't do without getting rotors in the shot. The position of the camera in front of the Karma drone gives a clearer view. GoPro founder and CEO Nick Woodman has admitted that there is a second drone in development, but gave no timeline for when that new aircraft would be available. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week. <laughs>